Join Kids Hat Family. What is wrong, Tofu? I don't want to go to school today. Jim and Jerry took all the tokens I had collected for the charity and submitted it as their own. Now they are going to win the appreciation sticker. Don't worry about it, Tofu. Sometimes it's okay to let go of things and just hold on to the joy they brought you. I don't know, Tia. Do you know a nice story to help me believe? Sure. I'll tell you a story. Once upon a time, a poor farmer was ploughing his field. When he hit something hard, it was a large metal pot. What's this? A metal pot? I wonder if there is something more valuable underneath. In the hope that he could find something more valuable, the farmer dug deeper and wider. Tired after hours of searching, the farmer decided to rest. He left his spade in the pot. and lay down under the tree. A while later, when he got up and went back to the pot, he was surprised. How is this possible? The pot is full of hundreds of spades. I had left only one in it. Looks like this is a magical pot. Let me see what will happen if I put a mango in it. Just as the farmer had thought, the one mango turned into hundreds of mangoes when he left it in the pot. This is truly a magical pot. I will take it home and use it to tide over our troubles. The farmer went home and hid the pot at a safe place. He then went to the market and sold the mangoes. He earned a handsome sum for them. On the way back, he brought some grains. He went home and put each one of them in the pot one by one. Enough of grains to last his family for the rest of the year. The farmer called his wife and told her everything that had happened. This is a blessing. 
We should use it wisely to become rich but also keep it safely hidden. The farmer agreed with his wife. Over the year, he slowly started putting things in the pot. Fruits, vegetables, textiles, and in some years, he turned around his family's fortune. Though they had been secretive and very careful about their magic pot, people started noticing how they had become rich. And soon their secret was out. It even reached the king's ears. Such a powerful magical pot should be a part of the king's treasury. The farmer has no right to keep it. Only I have the right to own that pot. The king ordered the soldier to bring the pot to the palace. The soldier stormed into the farmer's home. and confiscated the pot. They brought it to the king. Let me see what is inside the pot that makes it so magical. Once I find what it is, I will become a hundred times more powerful. The king peered over the pot and looked into it. As he did, he lost his balance and fell into the pot. As he fell, he hit his head on the edge of the pot and became unconscious. When he woke up, he saw that there were hundreds of kings like him. They all fought each other to get to the throne and died. Soon the news reached the farmer and his wife. Should we get the pot back now? The king was foolish and his curiosity killed him. But it is not safe to keep the pot anymore. We have enough money and riches to take care of us and our many next generations. Let us leave the pot within the king's treasury. Oh, thank you, dear. That was indeed an inspiring story. And I feel much better now letting go of those tokens. Good to know that, Tofu. Now will you please finish your cereal so that we can go? Hey, Tia. What are you doing? I'm meeting the new school principal tomorrow. So just putting my things in order. Oh, you want to impress him, is it? I'm not sure about that, but I don't want to disappoint him either. Maybe you should tell him that you're the best in class. And also tell him that you're a champion swimmer and always come first in all the sports activities. And that you always win all the debates and elocutions. Tofu, I can't do that. Not all of that is true. Yes, but most of it is. Oh boy, you're acting like the miller. The miller? Who is that? Come, let me tell you a story. Rumpelstiltskin Once upon a time, the king called the village miller to the court. The miller went there with a mind to impress the king by any means possible. 
and so when he was presented in front of the king he lied that his daughter who was an excellent spinner could spin gold from straw oh that's impressive i order you to bring her to the castle tomorrow and she will spin gold for me The miller goes back home and tells his daughter what he'd done. Oh no! What have you done, father? I cannot spin gold. I don't think anyone can. I know, and I am sorry, my child, but there is no way out of it now. You must go to the court tomorrow and spin the best you can. Ah, uh, uh, yes, father. And so the girl went to the court the next day. Your father tells me that you can spin gold out of straw. In that room there is bale of straw. I give you till tomorrow morning. You must spin it into gold by then or you will lose your life. The miller's daughter had no choice but to do as told. She went into the room and locked herself in. As the night wore on, she didn't know what to do. There was no way she could spin gold. Afraid that her father's lie would get her punished by the king, she started crying. Just then, a strange little man appeared in the room. I know what bothers you. <laughs> Do you? Yes, and I can help you. I can spin the straw into gold for you. Oh, oh please do it then. I beg of you. What will you give me in return? Uh, I can give you this necklace of mine. Okay. I will spin for you. And so the little man got to the spinning wheel and started spinning. Within an hour he had converted all the straw into gold. He then took the necklace from the miller's daughter and went out of the window. The next morning the king came into the room. Is my gold ready? Yes, your majesty. Very good. Now I have another test for you. The castle's barn is full of straw. You will spin all that straw into gold till tomorrow morning. The miller's daughter was taken to the barn. Once alone, she was again surrounded by worries. She didn't know what to do. Soon it was night. Afraid of the king's reaction, she started crying. <laughs> You've got a barn full of straw for yourself today. The girl looked up to see the strange man from the night before. 
Yes, and the king needs it to be spun into gold by tomorrow morning. Hmm. What will you give me in exchange for it now? I don't have much, but I can I can give you this ring off my finger. The man took the ring from her and started spinning the straw into gold. The next morning, when the king saw the shining gold, his greed increased. Very well, the castle has yet another barn, bigger than this one. If you value your life, you will spin all the straw in it into gold by tomorrow morning. If you succeed, I will marry you and make you the queen. And if you fail, off with your head, I'll have. Once again, the king had left. The girl was taken into another barn. It was bigger than any room that the girl had ever seen and so full of straws. She broke down as soon as the king's men had left. She knew she was surely doomed now. When night fell, the little man appeared again. Need my help again, is it? Yes, please. Please spin the straw into gold and save me. Well, I could do that. But what will you give me now? I have nothing left to give you now. You could give it to me when you have it. Yes, I will. Tell me, what can I give you? Your first born child. The girl gasped, but thought, who knows what may happen in the future. It was wiser to save her present. So she agreed. Okay, I will give you my first born child. The strange man happily got to spinning the straw. When the king came in the next morning, the whole barn was full of glistening gold. Happy, he announced his marriage with the miller's daughter. Soon a year passed and the new queen gave birth to a baby boy. The boy was only a day old when the strange little man appeared in her room once again. It is time to settle your debt. The boy is mine. Oh no! Can't you forget this debt? Never! Please! There has to be some way. I will give you gold, fortunes, whatever you want. I only want the boy, but I will give you three days to guess my name. If at the end of the third day you can guess it right, I will leave you and this boy alone. 
If you can't, the boy will be mine. As soon as the man had left her room, the queen called her trusted soldier and ordered him to gather every name he can find in the kingdom. The soldier set on his mission immediately. The next evening, he came and gave the queen a list of names. When night fell, the little man visited the queen again. Do you know my name? Uh, is it James? Or Jack? Well, is it Richard? Or Kenny? She continued with all the names she knew and the names that the soldier had brought back from the village. No, no, no! These are not my names. But the little man said no to every name. That is not my name. I leave you now with two days left to find what it is. The queen sent her man out yet again to go to the farthest corners of the kingdom. Till then she read all the books she could find hoping that one of them might give her the man's name. The next night, when the man came back, she gave him the names her soldier had brought back and the ones she had collected from the books. Uh, is your name Casper? Sheepshanks? Tommen? None of them. I leave you again. I will come back tomorrow to take away the boy. Because you won't be able to guess my name. Once again the queen implored the soldier to go out in the kingdom and find her a name. The next evening before the little man would come, the soldier returned to the queen with some news. My lady, alas, I could not find any new names in the kingdom and its neighbors. However, last night, after I left the castle, I came upon a clearing in the forest where I saw a strange little man danced around the fire. He sang a strange song too. She can search the land, she can search the sky, but a name like mine she will never come by. Rumpelstiltskin, that's me. The moment the queen heard the name, she knew it was the one. She happily waited for the strange man to come visit her. Have you found my name yet? Oh no! I can only wonder what it can be. Is it Apple Tree? Myrel? Or maybe Rumpelstiltskin? How can that be? This is some sort of sorcery. How did you know my name? The moment the strange man heard his name, he became very angry. He shouted and stomped around the room. 
In his anger, he stomped so hard that there became a big hole in the ground and he fell into it towards his death. I wonder if the queen ever told her father about all this. We will never know, but we do know that trying to impress people may get us into big trouble. Oh yes, that lesson I've learned today and I don't think I will ever forget it. Thanks Tia for this wonderful story. Join Kids Heart family. Yay! We won! But why does Ron keep passing the ball to others? He's the best player on the team. He could make more goals if he just takes the ball all the way by himself. No Tofu! To win, you always need a team. Every player is equally important on the team. Come, I will tell you a story about the importance of teamwork. Once upon a time, a girl called Dorothy lived in Kansas City. She was playing with her best friend, a dog named Toto, when a scary cyclone came their way. Dorothy called out to Toto. Toto, hurry! We have to get to the basement. But before they could reach the basement, the cyclone lifted their house up and blew it away. After some time, it fell somewhere with a thud. When Dorothy stepped out of the house, she saw the house had landed on someone. Oh no! Toto, help me! Who is she? The house has landed on her. I'm so sorry. Just then, Dorothy and Toto heard people behind them rejoicing. They were the munchkins. Thank you, thank you. You have just saved us from the evil witch of the east. You have saved us all. Just then, another witch appeared. She was the good witch. Hello, Dorothy. You have done a great deed by saving all the munchkins. Let me know if you need anything. Thank you. Could you please tell me how to go back to Kansas City? That's where I used to live. I can't do that. But I think the Wizard of Oz can help you with that. Just follow the yellow brick road. It will lead you straight to him. But before you go, take these red slippers that the evil witch of the east had. You might need them. Dorothy thanked the good witch, took the slippers and made her way on the yellow brick road with Toto. She had only walked a bit when she came across a scarecrow. Hello. I am the Scarecrow. I have everything I want except a brain. My head is only filled with hay. Hello Scarecrow. I am going to the Wizard of Oz. Why don't you come with me? He might be able to help you. And so Dorothy was joined by the Scarecrow.
They had walked a few miles when they met the tin woodcutter. I want a heart. When my maker made me, he gave me everything but forgot to give me a heart. I wish he hadn't forgotten that. We are going to the Wizard of Oz. We are going to ask him for a way for Dorothy to get back to her home and for brains for me. Why don't you come with us? And so the tin woodcutter also joined them. They had walked for some time when they heard Toto barking. They turned around to see that a lion had attacked Toto. Get away from my dog, you nasty lion! The lion whimpered and ran away to a corner. Oh no! You aren't a brave lion at all, are you? No, I have no courage. I wish I had some. We are going to the Wizard of Oz. We will ask him for a brain for the scarecrow, a way for Dorothy to get back home, and a heart for me. Come with us. We will ask him for courage for you. The lion agreed and they all continued on the yellow brick road. They kept following the road and reached the Emerald City. They knocked on its big gates. A guard appeared. The wizard doesn't meet anyone but he has agreed to meet all of you. And so all the friends went to meet the wizard. They told him how and why they had come to meet him. Thank you Dorothy for freeing the lands from the evil witch of the east. But I will grant all your wishes when you free us from the evil witch of the west too. The friends agreed to the wizard's terms and left to find the evil witch of the west. But the evil witch of the west had heard about what had happened to the evil witch of the east. She also knew about Dorothy and her friends plan to kill her. She planned an attack on them. She sent a pack of her scariest wolves to stop them. The tin woodcutter stepped forward. This is a job for me. Everyone, stay back. The woodcutter hacked at the wolves with his axe till they all ran away. The wolves had just left when the skies became dark and many crows started coming down to peck at them all. This time the scarecrow stepped forward and scared all the crows away. Next, the evil witch sent flying monkeys. Before anyone could do anything, the monkeys grabbed them all and took them to the evil witch's castle. 
So, you've come to kill me, huh? How will you do that? The woodcutter is lying in a pile over the stones. I have emptied the scarecrow and strapped the cowardly lion to pull my cocks. Oh, you are so evil! What a horrible person you are! Saying so, Dorothy grabbed the bucket of water that was lying there and threw the water at the witch. Oh no! You threw water over me? I am going to shrink and melt! Help me! I'm melting! Oh my god! I'm melting! Help me! And so the evil witch of the west melted away. As that happened, all her slaves became free. They repaired the woodcutter, filled the scarecrow with hay and released the lion. Dorothy and her friends went back to the Emerald City. The Wizard of Oz welcomed them and granted the wishes of the Scarecrow, the Woodcutter and the Lion. What about my wish? How will I get back home? You don't need me for that. You had the power all along. Just click your heels together thrice and tell the slippers where you want to go. They will take you there. Though Dorothy was excited to go home, she was sad to leave her friends. She said a tearful goodbye to them. Then she picked up Toto in her arms and clicked her heels together three times and told her slippers to take her home. So you see Tofu? If all the friends hadn't worked together, they would have not been able to defeat the evil witch of the West. Hmm, yes Tia, I now understand the importance of a team. your project about tofu? We have to raise money for the class show. We have to make and sell something. So what have you decided to make? That's where the trouble is. I can't think of anything. I wish I had some magic and I could just get as much money as I wanted. In fact, I would use the magic to become the richest person on earth and sit back and relax the whole day. I would do nothing else. Well Tofu, you do know that there is more in life than only being rich. People like you more when you are honest, hardworking and humble. That's how Aladdin found his princess and lived a happy life. Aladdin? Who is that? I'll tell you. Once upon a time, there was a young boy named Aladdin. He lived with his mother and his pet monkey in a poor village of Arabia. The only relative Aladdin and his mother had was a distant uncle who hardly kept in touch with them.
One day, when Aladdin and his mother were finishing the daily chores, Aladdin's uncle showed up. Brother, what a pleasant surprise! How are you, sister? How is your son? We are both good, brother. It has been many years since you have visited us. Aladdin, this is your uncle. You saw him once when you were a little baby. Hello, uncle. Oh, what a young lad he has become. But I am sorry to see the state of things you have to live in, sister. I have a proposition. Let me take Aladdin with me and I will find him some work. Once he has earned enough, he can come back to you. Till then, keep this piece of gold to make your living. Oh brother, that is a wonderful idea. It will do Aladdin good to learn some work with you. The next morning, Aladdin and his uncle left. They walked through many villages and towns. Till one day, they came to a quiet place outside one of the villages. There were many caves and tunnels there. What are we doing here, uncle? I have a job for you here. Here, uncle? But there is nothing here except these rocks and caves. Look there, under the tree. There is a large stone with a ring on it. I want you to lift it. Okay, uncle. As you say. Uncle, this rock is very heavy. No, I can't help you. It is your job. You have to do it. It's opening. It's opening, Uncle. I can see a narrow passage and some stairs leading further down. Very good job, my boy. Now I want you to go in there. But before you go, here, wear my ring. This is a magical ring. It will keep you safe. Yes, uncle. Aladdin follows his uncle's directions and goes down the stairs. Once at the bottom, he sees that it is a large cave filled with many jewels and gold coins. Pick up the large gold plates and urns. Fill them up with gold and jewels. Pick up anything else that you think may be worth something. Aladdin does as his uncle had told him. He stuffed the large urns 
with many precious items and made his way back towards the staircase. On his way out, he saw a small dusty lamp. Although it didn't look precious, he decided to take it too and tucked it into his shirt. When Aladdin had reached the top of the staircase, he called out to his uncle for help. Here uncle, please take these hands and then pull me up too. I cannot get out by myself. The opening is too far for me. Yes, yes. Give me the urns. Okay, uncle. Now pull me out. <laughs> pull you out so that you can go and tell everyone where the treasure is? <laughs> Never. I brought you along because this is a cursed cave. Only a small boy can go in and out of it. I have what I wanted. I don't have to come back for more for a long time. Saying so, Aladdin's uncle shut the cave's opening with a large stone that had a ring on it. leaving Aladdin behind in the cave. Aladdin was shocked, but he stayed patient. Uncle has betrayed us, but I must find a way out and get back to my house. Dear God, show me a way out of here, please. Aladdin joined his hands and bowed his head to pray. As he put his hands together, his fingers rubbed over his uncle's magical ring and a creature came out of it. Yes, Master, you called me. Uh, who are you? I am the slave of this ring and whoever wears it. I must obey any one command of the master of the ring and then the ring will be destroyed, freeing me. How may I serve you, my master? Can you please get me out of here and back home to my mother? Yes, master, right away. The next moment, Aladdin was home with his mother. His mother was surprised to see him back home so soon and in such an abrupt manner. My son, you have returned so soon. Where is your uncle? Have you already earned so much money? Uncle cheated on us, mother. I will tell you everything, but first give me something to eat. I haven't eaten anything since yesterday. Aladdin's mother served him the remainder of food as he told her what had happened and how his uncle had tricked and abandoned him. I can't believe my own brother would do this to us, son. I am glad you are home safe now. But the gold coin your uncle gave me has run out and we have nothing to eat now. Don't worry mother, I have this lamp. I will go into the market and sell it tomorrow. Let us sleep for now. Relieved that they were together, Aladdin and his mother slept peacefully that night. The next morning, Aladdin asked his mother for the lamp. Mother, I'm very hungry. Give me the lamp. I will go and sell it so we may have some bread. Here, son, take the lamp. 
but clean it nicely and polish it before you go to the market. A shiny lamp will fetch you more money. Yes, mother. As Aladdin started dropping the lamp clean with his shirt, a magical creature appeared from it. Yes, Master, what is your command for me? Uh, Master? Are you like the creature of the ring? Yes, Master. He is my brother, and I know that he freed you from the caves. What is going on, Aladdin? Who is this? Uh, don't worry, mother. This is a magical creature of the lamp. He will grant us anything we wish for. Call me Genie, my master. Very well, Genie. Please get us something to eat. We are very hungry. As soon as Aladdin had said it, several silver plates appeared with a variety of food in them. The Genie went back into the lamp while Aladdin and his mother had a hearty meal. When it was evening, they were hungry again. It's time for dinner. What shall we do? Should I call the genie again? No. Look, he has left us with these silver plates. Go and sell them in the market. We will buy bread after that. Aladdin agreed with his mother and took one of the silver plates to the market. He saw a Turkish trader and decided to strike a deal with him. But Aladdin didn't know the value of his silver tray or how to do business. How much you want for this train? Please give me whatever you think is fit. I trust you. Okay, take one gold coin. Okay, thank you. The trader was surprised by Aladdin's innocence and was tempted to tell him that he had made a mistake and that the tray was of even lower value than he had coated. But instead, he let him go. Such an innocent boy. He didn't even bother to find out the actual value of the plate. Just trusted me blindly. Perhaps I should have given him the fair value. Haha, <laughs> anyways. With the gold coin he had got, Aladdin bought food and other necessary supplies for his home. But within a few days, they ran out of all the supplies. So Aladdin went back to the Turkish trader and sold him another plate. This time, the trader gave him two gold coins. Again, Aladdin bought food and supplies for his home. This went on for many days till Aladdin ran out of all the silver plates. Son, 
there is no food in the house and no plates to sell as well. What shall we do now? I will rub the lamp and call the genie again. Yes, Master. How can I help you today? There is no food in the house. Can you get us some food? Yes, of course, Master. Once again, the genie brought them food on many silver plates. Although Aladdin had the magic lamp, they never used it to satisfy any greed. They continued to live frugally, except now his mother started saving a little money from the sale of every silver plate. Like this, in a few years, they had enough money to live a decent life. Aladdin even became a merchant and almost never used the lamp again. One day, he was returning from work. He happened to see the princess as a procession passed from the street. Mother, I am in love with the princess and I have decided to marry her. I will present her with many jewels and precious things that we have collected over the years. Aladdin went to the king and asked for his daughter's hand in marriage. The king saw the honesty in Aladdin's nature and agreed. Aladdin married the princess and showered her with all the riches he had. The news of the happy couple spread across the land till it reached his uncle. So, Aladdin got out and betrayed me, huh? He found a magic lamp and didn't tell me. I shall kill him with my own hands and get the lamp from him. One day, when Aladdin was away at work, his uncle went to his home and stole the magic lamp. He then ordered the genie to transport the whole house into the middle of the desert where no one could find it. What have you done? Where is Aladdin? You will never see him again. Now you are liable to me. You will do as I tell you. Now go and get me some wine and dinner. The princess did as she was told, but as she did so, she planned her escape too. She mixed some sleeping powder in his wine and gave it to him. As soon as he drank it, he fell into a deep sleep. The princess quickly reached for the lamp and rubbed it. The genie appeared. 
Yes, mistress. How may I serve you? Save me, genie. Please find Aladdin and get him here. Yes, mistress. The next moment, Aladdin was there. He saw his uncle sleeping and the genie present. He understood what had happened immediately. He waited till his uncle got up. And then he killed him. He then told the genie to take them back home. The genie did as told. And they continued to live their happy life. Hmm, so he took the hard way. What a good man Aladdin was. Yes, he was. Well, I think I do want to be honest and sincere like him. I am never going to look for shortcuts or be lazy again, Tia. I promise. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.